Hello everyone. This is SK Mehta, presently the president of the Indian Nuclear Society called INS. I wish to welcome you all to this INS series lectures. This series about uh, 13 lectures is aimed to acquaint you with the various aspects of the nuclear energy its utilization in various areas benefiting humanity, the limitations and the regulatory aspects in safety and protection. One of the main objectives of the INS is to promote the advancement of nuclear science and engineering and technology related to the atomic nucleus and the allied sciences and arts. With this objective, INS has been disseminating information through journals, books, reports, newsletters, seminars, and conferences. These have mainly been to keep the INS members and other scientific communities and organizations well informed about the development in the various areas of science and technology within India and world over. Or it is realized that there is a need to keep the various professionals, undergraduate students, and general public knowledgeable in their respective fields of nuclear science and engineering. For the benefit of, uh, of the public, some of the important and the common application of nuclear being for power, industrial use, medical diagnosis and treatment, agriculture, food preservation, and various other areas. This lecture series is made in simple language and illustration with the aim to inform the general viewer about the science, engineering, and technology, social benefits of the nuclear, application of nuclear carrier benefits in nuclear and regulatory and safety of the nuclear energy. The presentations are prepared and narrated by experts on each topic in a way that the viewers with no background knowledge about the nuclear science and engineering can understand. Our effort will be to constantly provide information about newer benefits to the society emerging out of the pain-taking research and nuclear science and engineers. Viewers are encouraged to comment, suggest, and put forward question to the experts. The channel of the constructive communication will always be open in INS, which is website ins-india.org. Welcome all to this wonderful lecture series by Indian Nuclear Society. There are 13 lectures on various topics related to nuclear energy and its application to societal benefits. All these lectures will cover different aspects of nuclear energy in sectors like power, medicine, agriculture and society. It illustrates in simple way the science behind nuclear reactors for all of us. Hello all and welcome for this lecture from Indian Nuclear Society. Today we will discuss about various aspects of materials for nuclear reactor core components. This has specific focus on Indian nuclear reactor system that is pressurized heavy water reactor or PHWR. I am Vinay Vaze and I am from Reactor Design and Development Group of Bhava Atomic Research Center, Mumbai. Welcome to this lecture on materials for nuclear reactor core components. Reactor core is a major part of a nuclear reactor where heat is released in the fission chain reaction to generate electricity. The choice of material, it depends on the many factors like type of reactor, 
type of coolant, maximum service temperature, aqueous corrosion resistance, and presence of radiation in the reactor. The radiation has effect on the properties of materials used for reactor components and it thereby affects their performance over a period of time. All these components and materials should be able to withstand the intended operation without any failure under various degradation mechanisms in the reactor core. The materials used in the nuclear reactors have unique desirable characteristics and there are very limited choices for the materials that satisfy the specific nuclear requirements. So this lecture on reactor materials will explore various aspects associated with the materials, the nuclear requirements, the effect of radiation on materials, behavior of these materials under tough reactor operating conditions. It will also discuss the selection basis and presently used materials for different components inside a nuclear reactor core such as fuel, cladding, coolant, moderator, structural, etc. This is overview of what we are going to discuss in this lecture. Starting from fundamentals of a power plant, we will see how radiation has effect on material behavior and thereby performance of nuclear reactor components. Material selection is one of the important aspects considering the unique and stringent requirements for the core components. We will go through what are the type of reactor core components in Indian reactors, typical materials used for different nuclear reactor components inside the core. So let us begin this fascinating journey of materials of reactor core components. A typical thermal power plant uses heat energy to convert water into steam. This heat energy is obtained by burning of fossil fuels that is coal or oil. It is done in a component called boiler where the water passes through the tubes and forms steam after receiving the heat energy. The steam then expands into turbine and drives the turbo generator which converts energy into electricity. This electricity is supplied to power grid and then it comes to our homes and supplied to industry. The steam coming out of the turbine is condensed into water again by a component known as condenser. This condensed water is then fed back to the boiler for circulation of the steam. In case of a nuclear power plant, the heat source to convert water into steam is nuclear fission chain reaction. The heat energy is obtained from a nuclear fission reaction. It is done in a nuclear reactor where water passes through the tubes over fuel and form steam after receiving the heat energy released during fission. The steam then expands into turbine, drives the turbo generator and produces electricity in the same way as it is done in typical thermal power plant. So only difference is the source of heat. Here we can see how a thermal power plant is different from a nuclear power plant. The source of heat energy released is different in the two cases. The burning of coal is the thermal plant is a chemical reaction while fission is a nuclear reaction in nuclear power plant. The coal gets converted to ash and we can observe the change in its visible form clearly. However, in nuclear power plant, fuel bundle goes in a reactor core and comes out without much visible difference. After going through the fundamentals of power plant, let us go inside the nuclear power plant. We will discuss about Indian PHWR that is pressurized heavy water reactor. Here we see reactor building which is a civil structure housing all the necessary equipment, process piping and reactor core. Typically it is about 40 meter in height. 
that is equivalent to approximately more than 10 storied of a building. Reactor core is the most critical structure and there are other associated components and systems for safe operation like steam generator, coolant pumps, shutdown system, emergency core cooling system, fuel handling system, and fuel transport system, etc. This shows a typical reactor core configuration for Indian pressurized heavy water reactor. It is a cylindrical shaped structure with about 6 meter in diameter and about 7 meter long horizontal orientation. We have 18 such reactors of different power capacities located in the various parts of the country. A typical nuclear reactor core contains fuel, coolant, moderator as the main constituents. These materials mainly decide the type of reactor. Indian PHWRs have horizontal coolant tubes through which the coolant flows over fuel bundle. There is moderator surrounding these coolant tubes. Control rods are neutron absorbing materials that control the chain reaction and thereby the fission power in the reactor. All these components are enclosed in a structure known as calendria vessel. The selection of materials is affected by many parameters or the factors. First factor is the operating conditions in reactor core like pressure, temperature, radiation, etc. that affect performance of a component. Typically, a nuclear power plant is designed for 40 years and some advanced designs even for 60 years. The next factor is degradation mechanism that limits the use of component or the materials in the core. The next factor is availability of nuclear grade material in the required quantity, quality and also the material property data for design calculations, safety studies and regulatory documents. In addition to availability, the material shall be easy to fabricate or manufacture into the components which have dimensions ranging from very small like 1 cm or so to very large like 6 to 7 meters. The existing experience of the same material components in national or international domains is also helpful for improving the understanding and its performance behavior in the reactor core. Ultimately, every component material fabrication process has to be at reasonable cost that is economics is also important. Thus, the choice of materials for core components and non-core components in a reactor depends on operating conditions, type of reactor, residence time of residence time of component in a reactor, and material degradation mechanisms. Let us focus on the peculiar operating conditions which have impact on material selection. First is the temperature. Thermal energy released during fission reaction is carried away by reactor coolant medium. The reactor coolant in PHWR is heavy water and typically has a temperature of 300 degree centigrade. This thermal energy heats up the structure and generates thermal loading. It also produces stresses on different reactor components. All the core components and the structures have to necessarily perform well under these high temperature conditions throughout the life of a reactor. Then we have coolant pressure. Typical coolant pressure in the reactor system in Indian PHWR is about 100 bar. This is a pressure that one can experience at about 100 meter depth under water. The forces from this pressure generates loading and so the stresses on different components. The structures have to sustain these stresses throughout the life for successful operation of the reactor component. Corrosion is one of the undesirable chemical reaction of metals. All of us have seen the rusting in the bicycle spokes or wheel rim 
during monsoon season that is nothing but corrosion corrosion is basically effect of surrounding environment on material by its chemical reaction these are some of the photographs of corrosion of metal under sun air or rain in open atmosphere the corrosion products formed are most of the times undesirable because they reduce the strength of the original metal it affects the heat transfer this has impact on performance as well as life of the component corrosion can be localized or uniform over a surface it can be seen in the picture it could be inside the piping or outside the piping so proper measures have to be provided for avoiding or at least reducing the corrosion in the reactor core components as we have seen typically nuclear reactor operating conditions include high pressure high temperature or corrosion environment and these are experienced in any other industrial activities also however it is the radiation environment that separates the nuclear industry from other industries radiation cannot be seen cannot be felt or it cannot be experienced like pressure temperature or corrosion there are different types of radiations like alpha beta gamma alpha particles are positively charged and can be stopped by a simple paper as we can see in the image beta radiation can be stopped by plastic or cloth gamma rays require high density materials like concrete or steel or lead as shielding material all the materials have neutrons as subatomic particles and these neutrons are electrically neutral these different types of radiations with different energy levels are present inside a nuclear reactor system the material has to perform well under radiation environment as per the design for the intended period of operation a neutron is a subatomic particle it does not carry any charge and it can interact in three different ways with the material atom in case of scattering the neutron interacts with the atom and there is only exchange of energy this is like a billiard ball collision the atom may go to excited state or in a different energy state in case of capture the energy is absorbed in the atom and this forms a new isotope of that material in case of fission the neutron strikes on the atom and the splits into the atom into two lighter elements this reaction releases three neutrons and heat energy the neutron interacts with the material depending on the energy level and the probability of particular type of interaction for the material under consideration for example uranium atoms have high probability of fission reaction when it sees a slow energy neutron boron or cadmium atoms have high probability of capture reaction or absorbing of the neutron let us now see effect of radiation on material properties typically a crystalline solids show a regular pattern of atoms arranged in the material when an energetic particle comes and interacts with the atoms and if it has sufficient energy it can dislodge the atoms from its regular position this creates a vacancy that is absence of an atom at its regular position if the particle has sufficient energy further it can continue to do so and create some more vacancies in the crystal structure it can continue to do so till it comes in equilibrium with the material structure so there are number of vacancies created by radiations in the same way 
there are number of interstitial atoms are created so these are nothing but the atoms which are displaced from their other locations and they are now occupying a place where they should not be so vacancies and interstitial atoms these are the structural changes that are done by radiation now we see the changes in various properties of material because of radiation first let us try to understand the fundamentals of these basic properties this is typical stress versus strain graph for a material as you can see on the screen strength is the maximum load that it can sustain or resist for a given deformation elastic modulus or the young's modulus as we have studied in our college it shows the linear dependence of the load and deflection that is if the load is doubled the deflection will be double thus there is a really linear relationship between the load and the deflection then toughness is the area under stress strain curve as shown by the shaded region higher the toughness higher is the capacity of the material to withstand the sudden or shock loads or the impact loads ductility is the ability of the material to be drawn into wire so how these properties are affected by radiation with radiation exposure the material strength increases that is component can sustain higher loads the elastic modulus increases while the toughness and ductility reduces under irradiation this means the capacity of component or the material to take the shock load is reduced also its capacity to stretching like elastically like rubber is reduced thus as a result of radiation some of the properties increase like yield strength tensile strength young's modulus or elastic modulus hardness and creep rate then some of the properties decrease as a effect of radiation these include ductility density of the material impact strength and thermal conductivity etc when the radiation affects the material properties it generally happens over a period of time typically a nuclear reactor is designed for 40 years and some advanced designs have a life of 60 years the time frame over which these changes occur in the materials due to radiation are typically much higher than the life span of the reactor components so to summarize we see the operating conditions for a nuclear reactor we have high pressure high temperature corrosion environment and radiation environment which is seen by the materials or the components in the reactor core now with this background of operating conditions for the reactor core let us see what are the desirable technical properties for the materials mechanical properties tell about strength ductility toughness or hardness high strength of the material helps against the forces or the loads during operation high ductility ensures the material can retain the stretching properties like rubber to accommodate operating loads high toughness helps in sustaining the impact loads or the shock loads thermal properties govern the behavior of component at elevated temperatures high heat transfer rates high thermal conductivity higher melting temperatures and good thermal stability are important requirements for material to perform at elevated temperatures when it comes to chemical properties the compatibility with the other structural materials chemical stability under operating conditions non toxicity and good corrosion resistance become very important for better performance of the component 
All these either independently or together may be required in other industrial applications. But nuclear reactors or their components in addition to all these properties have unique requirement of material nuclear properties. These include the low neutron absorption capability, low induced radioactivity and good stability under the radiation environment it sees in the reactor core. The nuclear properties mainly decide the use of a particular material for a specific function for a component. After seeing the operating conditions for reactor core and desirable material properties for components, let us revisit the different components in Indian nuclear reactor that is PHWR. It is a horizontal structure. It has coolant tubes through which the coolant flows over the fuel bundle. There is a moderator surrounding these coolant tubes and there are control rods which are neutron absorbing materials to control the chain reaction. These are in the vertical orientation to control the fission power. All these components are enclosed in a structure known as calendria vessel. Now we will go into the details of each of these components. Fuel is heart of nuclear reactor. Nuclear fission reaction is happening in fuel material and energy is released as heat. Uranium is commonly used fuel material in its oxide form in almost all the thermal power reactors worldwide for last more than five decades. Typical fuel bundle for PHWR is about half a meter length and has a diameter of around 10 cm as you can see in the picture. Number of such fuel bundles are placed inside each of the coolant tube for the reactor core in PHWR. The fuel material is uranium, uranium-235, plutonium-239 or uranium-233 are fissile materials that are suitable for chain reaction in nuclear reactor. Only uranium-235 has natural occurrence that too very low. The other two isotopes are produced after neutron irradiation of uranium or thorium in the reactor core. Uranium is commonly used fuel material in its oxide form in almost all the thermal power reactors in the world for last more than five decades. Here we can see uranium dioxide fuel bundle. The raw material is uranium dioxide powder and it is processed by thermomechanical techniques to make high density fuel pellets. These pellets are filled in cladding tube sealed at both the ends and such number of fuel pins are assembled together with structural components like end plate to form a fuel bundle. Number of such fuel bundles are placed in each of the coolant tubes of the reactor core. The atomic mineral directorate carries out the activities on exploration of atomic mineral resources in India. That is basically they try to identify the locations for nuclear materials like uranium. Once these are studied for scientific and economic feasibility, then extraction and processing of these uranium ore resources from mines is carried out by Uranium Corporation of India Limited or UCIL. All these materials are transferred to nuclear fuel complex at Hyderabad for processing and manufacturing of the fuel bundles under strict quality control. The nuclear fuel complex NFC located at Hyderabad is manufacturing fuel bundles for PHWRs operating in India since 1971. The fuel cladding is most important safety barrier in fission nuclear reactors. It retains most of the radioactive fission products within its volume and does not allow coolant to come in direct contact with fuel. The selection of fuel cladding material is based on many design considerations like neutron absorption cross section mechanical strength, service temperature, good corrosion resistance, and other thermal properties. Out of all the elements in the periodic table, only four elements satisfy the requirement of materials suitable for cladding tube. These are aluminum, magnesium, 
beryllium and zirconium beryllium being brittle and chemically toxic can be used on a limited scale magnesium is ruled out in water cooled reactors because of its high chemical reactivity aluminium has low melting point and can be used only in research reactors where temperatures are lower hence for water cooled nuclear power reactors the unique and sufficient choice is in the form of zirconium based alloys production of nuclear grade zirconium requires special technologies which has been mastered by only few of the countries and yes india is one of them coolant tubes provide the passage for high pressure high temperature coolant which is removing heat from the fuel these are horizontal thin and long tubes and also referred as pressure tubes in phwrs the material requires low neutron absorption high mechanical strength good corrosion resistance and creep resistance these tubes are manufactured from zirconium based alloys at nuclear fuel complex hyderabad the coolant is an important component that performs the function of removing heat from heated fuel bundle during operation and transients the material requirements include efficient heat transfer from hot fuel low neutron absorption in the reactor core low rate of chemical reaction with surrounding that is compatibility with the structural materials and also the stability under heat intense gamma and neutron irradiation to which the reactor components are exposed a suitable coolant is required to extract heat energy from the fuel light water is ordinary water which we know heavy water is with deuterium isotope of hydrogen it is basically d2o it is chemically similar slightly heavier than ordinary water as we can see from the table of properties but it has very good nuclear properties water is used as a coolant in world's 90% of the reactors there are some advanced reactor designs that use gas like helium or carbon dioxide as coolant or even liquid metals like sodium or lead in molten condition Indian PHWR contains large volume of heavy water around the coolant tubes inside calendria vessel this highlighted volume is a moderator for the reactor core it slows down the neutrons to make them suitable to cause fission in the reactor there are two types of neutrons based on their energy levels fast neutrons typically have energies in million electron volts with this energy a neutron can travel from the earth to the moon and come back in less than 1 minute for one trip the moderator material slows down these neutrons to level of electron volt range these are called as the slow neutrons or the thermal neutrons and the nuclear reactors based on this concept are referred as thermal reactors thus the moderator absorbs the energy from neutrons and slows them down the scattering reaction of neutrons is important for a material to be good moderator in a nuclear reactor when the energetic neutrons interact with moderator medium they undergo collisions and lose their energy as we see here neutrons of different energies are slowed down in moderating medium and these slow neutrons or thermal neutrons then interact with the fuel atoms to cause further fission it is desirable to have a good scattering probability but low neutron absorption probability for a material to be good moderator the material can be solid or liquid typically light water or heavy water are used as moderators in the majority of the reactors worldwide there are some designs that use graphite as moderator material heavy water board under department of atomic energy makes the heavy water not only for use in indian pressurized heavy water reactors but also exports to some other countries 
we can see the locations of different water plants in India on the screen. For control rods, neutron absorbing materials are used for controlling the neutron population inside the reactor core. These control rods are distributed in the reactor core volume. As we can see, these are vertically inserted from top in the typical PAWR reactor core. Any nuclear fission reaction produces more neutrons than it consumes. More than two neutrons are released per fission reaction. Only one neutron is necessary to cause fission in another atom. And this continues the chain reaction. The control rod materials strongly absorb these excess neutrons and help in sustaining the chain reaction. The capture reaction of neutrons is important for a material to be good control material in the reactor. There are two sets of control rods for two different functions, regulation and protection. One set of control rods adjusts the power in the reactor core as per the requirement and this is called as regulation. Another set of control rods stops the fission chain reaction resulting into shutdown of the reactor when there is a trigger signal for stopping the reactor. This is called as the protection function. For the material to be a good control material, high neutron absorption mm -hmm. capability is desirable. Additionally, its dimensional stability and corrosion resistance become important for the desired performance. Cadmium, cobalt, steel, are the control rod materials that are used in PHWR that is pressurized heavy water reactors in India. There are some designs that use boron also as control rod material. Calendria vessel is the main component that contains moderator, it supports coolant tubes with fuel bundles and also the coolant. It is a cylindrical horizontal structure it is like enclosure and major support structure for reactor core components. It is typically made up of stainless steel material. Here we can see a Calendria vessel for the latest PHWR as being manufactured by participation from Indian industries. So here we are summarizing all the different materials that are used in Indian PHWR. Basically, fuel, coolant and moderator, they decide the type of the reactor. Cladding, coolant tubes, they are made up of zirconium alloys. Coolant and moderator are typically heavy water. These control rods are cadmium, cobalt and steel. The calendria vessel is made up of stainless steel. Fuel in PHWR is uranium dioxide. And all these materials and components are indigenously manufactured with stringent specifications and quality control. As we have seen, fuel, coolant and moderator form the main components of reactor core and it governs the type of reactor system. In addition to this, there are other non-core components which are outside the reactor core but important for safety and other functioning. Some of these materials have functional requirements for shielding, fuel handling, steam generation, coolant circulation, etc. Some of these materials have stringent requirements because they cannot be accessed after the reactor starts operation or due to layout considerations or due to reactivity or radioactivity or maybe physical barrier. So, in general, there are large quantities of other high quality or nuclear grade materials that are required for non-core components also within the reactor building. Material technology development is not as easy as it appears. We need to understand the material science, its metallurgy, crystal structure, the physics and the chemistry aspects that govern the material behavior. The destructive and non-destructive testing is very essential for evaluation of mechanical, chemical, thermal or metallurgical properties. 
it should be possible to manufacture the component from the material to achieve the desired complex geometry product with unique properties for the intended function the component design has to be assessed thoroughly by analysis as well as by experiments under radiation environment to establish confidence about its performance this is done in research reactor for studying the material irradiation behavior all these help in finalizing the technical specifications for each of the different components for reactor core thus we see that the expertise from various domains of science and engineering is necessary to develop special materials for reactor core components india got independence in 1947 and this year in 2022 we are celebrating 75 years of independence that is azadi ka amrut mahotsav in terms of number of reactors there were two nuclear power reactors and two research reactors operating after 25 years of independence additionally all the necessary facilities and plants were built and made operational for exploration mining and processing of nuclear fuel material uranium and then manufacturing of fuel bundles for use in reactors as the need was felt npcl nuclear power corporation was formed to take care of operation and maintenance of growing number of nuclear power plants in india similarly a regulatory body atomic energy regulatory board aerb was created for review monitoring and regulation of various nuclear facil facilities in country number of reactors have doubled and installed electrical capacity has tripled in last 25 years thus decades of indigenous r&d efforts have helped to achieve the desired material behavior in reactor components this shows the capacity factors for the last almost uh, 17 to 18 years of indian pressurized heavy water reactors as we can see from here the capacity factor has increased from 60% to 88% over the last about 12 years this is significant improvement indicating consistent performance of indian nuclear plants here we have plotted the number of days of continuous operation for a different nuclear power plants in india as we can see there has been continuous operation of more than 360 days at more than 38 occasions also more than 7 times the plants have operated for 600 days plus duration kaiga unit 1 located in the northern karnataka has operated for continuous 962 days of operation in the year 2018 excellent performance with a world record at kaiga site for the second longest continuous operation of a nuclear plant design specifications as per international standards manufacturing processes with strict quality control operating conditions and parameters of reactor core along with the periodic rigorous reviews by regulatory body has helped in achieving highest level of standards of safety and consistent excellent performance for indian nuclear reactors so to summarize we have seen the concept of thermal and nuclear power plant their components effect of radiations on the metal properties then material selection criteria and different components in core and out of core and their materials then decades of r&d which has led to indigenous manufacturing capability and ultimately excellent performance and safety records for the indian reactors so i hope you all enjoyed this lecture do not miss other lectures